Hi and welcome to another English at Penrice YouTube video. Today we're going to be having a look at starting to explore Macbeth, uh, looking at each scene um, and taking some notes in order to um, ensure that we have a really good understanding of the key ideas, references, quotations and methods that Shakespeare is using. Today we're going to be having a look at how to use Cornell notes as a method of note taking. Uh, this is just one way that you could um, organise your notes, uh, but it is a really effective way um, of organising those ideas that you're going to need to review uh, when you come back to look over the play. OK, so let's start by having a look at um, a Cornell Notes page, how it's organised and what goes where. So um, on the screen here, you can see your notes page. At the top, we have the title. Um, in this case, we're going to be making notes on each scene of the play Macbeth. So the title will be which act and scene you're looking at. Underneath that, we have um, a small column um, entitled Keywords and Questions. Then we've got this big space here for our notes. And finally, at the bottom, we have a summary box. I've also added um, an image, an icon to jog our memory about the main um, event of that particular scene. In this case, um, it's the witch's hat, because, of course, in that opening scene, we are going to meet uh, the witches. OK, what goes into each of these boxes then? So in your big notes space, uh, we're making um, uh, space for key ideas from the scene, references, um, quotes, brief analysis, any methods that Shakespeare's used and uh, any links to context. So as we're reading or as we're looking at um, a video about the scene or as we're looking through uh, our revision guide or notes on the scene, we're going to be compiling our main notes here. Then we condense those notes. So shortly after we've we've completed that lesson, we've we watched the video, we've explored the scene, and um, we've made all our notes, we condense those notes into key vocabulary. So really important words or very short phrases. And also if we have room, any questions that we can use to quiz ourselves at a later date. Okay, I'll give you an example of that in a moment. Finally, um, later on, perhaps at the start of the next lesson or a few hours later, we go back to our notes page, um, our back to our keywords and questions, and we summarize all of that scene um, and we reduce our information to you know, a few sentences um, to the key points that we want to remember about that scene. OK, let's have a look at an example then. So we're looking at Act 1, Scene 1 to begin with, and we've decided that we want to use Cornell notes to, to make notes on the um, on the scene. Um, what are we going to include? So this scene is incredibly short, so we um, uh, would will be able to read through this fairly quickly. If you haven't done so already, just pause the video here, have a read through the scene, have a look at any notes um, in your in the margins if you're using the C, uh, CGP guide or one that has any notes. Um, just to make sure that you've understood what's going on in the scene. In a nutshell, we've got uh, the opening scene of Macbeth with um, thunder and lightning, three witches planning to meet Macbeth um, once again. Um, and we're going to decide how to make our notes on this scene now. OK, so having read through the scene, um, which starts with um, unsettled weather, in this stage direction, thunder and lightning, and we've got the fog referred to, the filthy air um, at the end of the scene as well. Now, because I'm exploring this scene, because I've watched a video or I've looked at um, a guide to the scene, I'm going to be making notes on why that setting, that weather um, is, is decided upon by Shakespeare. Um, so we've got here, we've got our analysis going into our notes page that we are met as an audience with unsettled weather in the stage direction. Now I've put SD, um, I've shortened stage direction to SD. If you can remember that that's what it means, the SD means stage direction, then shorten it. If you can't, write it out in full. 
I've also put in my notes section some key quotes, so thunder and lightning and fog. And then I've explored a little bit, so brief analysis, um, I've explored that method of pathetic fallacy that Shakespeare is using here to create a dark, violent and ominous atmosphere. Again, I've shortened atmosphere to atmos. If you won't remember that that's what it means, then write it out in full. Okay, what else is going to go in my notes? notes section for this scene well i've got three witches again entering in that opening stage direction and i just want to link this to the theme of the supernatural in the play and also a link to context as i said earlier if we can make links to context in this notes section it's really helpful so i've linked it to james the first's uh, writing of the demonology book so his book on witchcraft and super the supernatural and his belief that these were slaves of the devil um, so already we're meeting characters on stage who in the jacobean era would have been um, you know, seen as instruments of uh, of the devil um, and of products of hell. So, you know, we've got this uh, this dark, ominous atmosphere continuing, not just through the weather, but also through the characters that we meet. And then I've picked up on a few really key quotations uh, from the witches here. So when the battle is lost and won, and at the end of the scene, fair is foul and foul is fair. And they speak in confusing contradictions. So I've just popped that down in that notes section here. I've used uh, those key quotes and then I've explored that, those quotes in a little bit of detail here. The paradoxical, so the, you know, the idea that um, something seemingly impossible um, is contradicted. So, how, you know, the battle's lost and won, fair is foul or how can something that's fair be foul it's paradoxical language um, and also just noting that this suggests uh, or hints at the sinister nature of the supernatural you know maybe they delight in things that are foul and corrupt they take pleasure in it to them fair uh, foul things are, are pleasurable and, and joyous it also i'm just exploring a little bit more here um the quotation um it presents the idea of good versus evil, so fair being good, foul being evil and corrupt. Um, furthermore, just extending my notes even more, it links to the theme of appearance and reality in the play. What appears to be fair, what appears to be good um, and beneficial, um, is actually is actually foul, is actually um, harmful. Uh, and then just, you know, using uh, my notes or, or the video on the scene that I've watched, I'm also just going to note down that this um, conveys the witches to be untrustworthy from the very, very start of the play. We can't trust them um, because of the way they view the world um, and the way that they talk in such confusing contradictions. And it there finally links to um, their deception, how they deceive uh, Macbeth uh, and their duplicity, um, which means, um, so, you know, saying one thing or appearing in one way, but actually being another. It's a more sophisticated word for being two-faced. And I'm going to try and put that into my notes as well. Um, then I'm going to add some comments on sort of structural features. So uh, fair is foul and foul is fair hover through the fog and filthy air, ending with a rhyming couplet then, um, which really reflects this idea of the which is chanting, almost spell-like. And finally, just a comment on the fact that this is the very opening scene. It's a dark, ominous scene, uh, full of confusion um, and uh, you know, potentially corruption with references to um, you know, unpleasant dark magic, perhaps, uh, this idea of things that are foul um, and this you know is being the opening scene suggests that these are in control of the rest of the play they're the which is maybe the driving force of the rest of the play that's maybe why Shakespeare has included uh, this as the opening scene okay so that is my notes section really detailed I can shorten words if, if I want to if I'm going to remember why they're shortened and what they mean I've chosen key ideas key references quotes and I've tried to analyze them briefly using my notes in my CGP or another uh, version of the play using um, explanation uh, videos or my revision guide. Then moving on to the keywords and questions column. So well, after my notes pay, after my notes section has been completed, I'm just going to condense my notes into keywords and questions. Um, I've chosen a different color. 
uh, just because that really helps um, with revision and review have to um, and I've condensed them and as you can see I've picked pathetic fallacy and um, ominous atmosphere this links the supernatural contradictions and so on and so on so I have chosen the words and the phrases and the questions that I think are most important um, to this particular scene and I've taken them from my uh, more detailed notes finally my summer rebot so I've come back um, a day or two later or at the start of my next lesson and I've summarized my notes and my keywords Again, I've used a different color just because I found that really helpful when I've come to revise. Um, and this is my summary. In the opening scene, three witches gather in violent, ominous weather. They speak in contradictions to imply their untrustworthiness and duplicity, attributes of the supernatural that James I believed in. Okay, so that's my summary of the opening scene. I could have maybe put a quotation, a very short quotation or two in that summary box, but I haven't today and I still have those quotes remember to refer to in my notes section when I come to revise. So that's an example of a Cornell notes page. Notes section, keywords section and summary section. Okay, that was um, an explanation of how to use Cornell Notes as we explore the play uh, Macbeth. Do sign up to the English at Penrice YouTube channel for lots more videos to support your uh, learning of the play and of English literature and language more widely.